The chairman of the Region 6 RDC held a press conference to discuss the lack of fuel supply to water pumps for rice farmers. Ronella Court reports. Yesterday, January 14th, the Region 6 Chairman, Mr. David Armagan, held a press briefing at his office in the RDC's compound, where he lamented on what has been occurring within the region's rice industry in relation to the availability of fuel to power water pumps for rice farmers to have access to water. Towards the end of last year, by the end of November, there was difficulty in terms of having enough money to buy fuel for the pumps that we have at both Manor and and Dr. Shola. The REO and the Superintendent of Works who is stationed at Albion, Mr. Travis, has insisted last year, had insisted that there is enough money and there is enough fuel in those pumps to last until the end of the year. And they had anticipated that in January, money would have been released to buy fuel so that we can continue to pump water for the farmers. I insisted last year because I, I've been in the system for quite some time and I know the capacity of these pumps because if you're pumping at full capacity, you'd be burning almost 1,200 gallons of fuel in the 24 hours at Blackbush Polar and about 600 uh, gallons for, for 24 hours at Manor Beauty. So it's, it's, it's quite a lot of fuel that has to be used. Now, I decided after I spoke with both of them, and I tried my best to get them to understand that we need to get some additional funds to buy fuel, they keep insisting that there, there is enough fuel to la in the system to last until the end of the year. At that point, I had no recourse, but I decided that I will write the President of Guyana, which I did. And I pointed out to him that the fuel budget was cut in last year. As a result of that, uh, we have run out of money to buy fuel for the um, irrigation pumps uh, in, in the region. He, um, I must say, he quickly responded to me and he sent a letter to the Ministry of Finance to see what assistance um, they can give to us. And so this money, the 30 million, was released to us by the Ministry of Finance last year. So I said, well, you know, at, at this time, when we come into January, because I know in January money are normally released very late in January. In fact, releases have not come as yet. And so I anticipated that if we bought fuel towards the end of um, December, or very early in the first week of January, we would have had sufficient fuel. So I anticipated that if we had bought the additional fuel in December and the rest in January, and carry it to the pump station, we would have had enough fuel to ensure that the irrigation pumps, they're all working and would be able to satisfy the needs of the farmers. Unfortunately, what has taken place is that the dams, because of the drizzles and so on, uh, short rainfall periods that we had, the, the, dam, the dams became deteriorated. And of course, when the dams become deteriorated, there was no other way to carry fuel because the gentleman who owns the boat that would normally take fuel to these pump stations, his engine and his gearbox is down, and so they are, he would not be able to do any work for us for the rest of January. So we have to take it by by uh, by the dams. Now, what has happened is they have waited, they have waited until now, when the fuel has almost run out of all these pump stations. Uh, as I speak, man are busy, only yesterday they took in um, 500 gallons of fuel. And today, they're supposed to take the Blackbush pumps, are going to be cut off, cut off today, because they're only operating two pumps for the last couple of weeks which is inadequate to supply the roadside uh, farmers with water. He further implored that rice farmers have a clear understanding of the situation at hand. So I, we empathize with the farmers, but unfortunately, uh, although we are in this position in the region as chair and my vice chairman, we do not control the money. We do not control the money. So as, as of now, if there's a crisis in the rice industry, the blame has to be put squarely, squarely at the feet of the REO and 
Mr. Travis, because they have mismanaged, they have mismanaged the system in such a way that even though the money was provided by the government, even though the money was provided by the government, they have failed to ensure that enough fuel is um, are in those pumps to ensure that we can pump continuously the irrigation pumps to ensure that all the farmers can get water in time and assist them to grow their body. And so I, am, um, I want the farmers to understand because some farmers believe that because this region is controlled by us, uh, my, myself and the, and the vice chairman, they believe because we run the region, we have the powers to do what we want to this region. But the purse is controlled by the RU. She determines when money must be spent and how money must be spent. And she's been advised by a person who knows, who has very, very limited knowledge of the rights industry. So we find ourselves in this very unfortunate situation where even though the money was provided, as I said, by central government, we find ourselves in a position because of inefficiency and ineptitude, we are not, uh, we are not able to fulfill our responsibility to the farmers at this point in time. I wanted to make that very, very clear because I don't want people to see that we are sitting here and we are not getting the work done. Due to this setback, only 42,000 acres of land are under cultivation during 2020, a significant reduction from 2019's cultivated acres. Reporting for Channel 8 News, Renetta Kurt.